welcome to this Tech Talk. Um, today we're going to talk about SAP and how you can leverage your SAP configuration and pricing data outside SAP. For example, by accessing the data from a CRM system, uh, building a configurator with your SAP data on your public website. I'm first going to talk a little more about the problem with accessing and interpreting SAP data outside SAP, uh, why it's important, but also why it is a challenge. And to get on the same page, uh, we'll quickly look at what data in SAP we're talking about and how you typically work with it. Um, then I'm going to explain a new type of solution um, that gives easy access to that SAP data. And I'll explain how you can enrich and combine SAP data with content from other sources. And then finally, I'll show very briefly a customer case that illustrates how you can use this solution in practice. So if you work for a manufacturing company that, that uses SAP as the record of master for your configurable products, you will at some point meet the following challenge. How do you enable your customers to configure and price your SAP products in a web-based solution outside SAP without having to replicate all your configuration rules and pricing data? Um, you've probably invested a lot of time in building up valuable knowledge inside your SAP system. Uh, how can a product be configured? What options do you offer? What are the rules that define what product variants are available and can actually be manufactured? Um, are all the products uh, and product options available in all sales areas um, or are there regional differences? And how does all of this influence the price calculation? For example, what are the, the default options that we would like to promote to position our product against competitors or to ensure the best margin? In short, how do you make all this um, valuable SAP data available to your customers, partners or sales reps so that they can accurately configure and price your products uh, on your website, in a CRM system, or for example, on a mobile device. And that's the topic of this uh, Tech Talk. So let's zoom in on the SAP system and look at what data uh, we're actually talking about and how it's organized. So suppose that you are manufacturing hearing aids and you model them in SAP VC. Um, this means that you'll be using classes and characteristics to model the variant structure of the hearing aid. For example, what style does the hearing aid have? What battery sizes are available? How powerful is the amplifier? Um, how many CPUs does it contain? And so forth. And you model all of these choices as characteristics in SAP. And you group these characteristics in classes. That's what we see here on this uh, screenshot here. And then you associate the class to a product or a material as they're called in SAP, and you mark it as configurable, as you can see that little check mark at the bottom there. And now you have a configurable material or KMAT as they're called in SAP. The next thing you do is to add a configuration profile uh, to the material, and then you can start adding some rules that specify how the product can be configured and priced. And you can write procedures that contain sequential statements, or you can write constraints um, that, at least to some extent, are declarative rules. We'll get back to that later though, but for now think of them as declarative rules. And for example, you can write a rule that specifies uh, that the style of the hearing aid that sits behind the ear uses one type of battery, and the one that sits in the ear uses a different type of battery, which is typically smaller. And here's an example on the screen where you can see how the price uh, is being uh, defined in a procedure. There will probably also be some rules that specify what hardware components are needed in order to uh, assemble the product. Uh, for example, if you want to stream music, you might need some special hardware components in order to do that. And finally, there'll be some rules that specify some limitations on, for example, how many different hardware components can be fitted inside the product. You can also define uh, table rules. Uh, these are called variant tables in SAP, and they specify, for example, like in this case, different combinations of color and size of the product in a, in a compact form in a table. And all of these rules are then stored 
in the configuration profile of the product. In addition to this, you also need to set up pricing. And there'll be typically a base price for the product, for the hearing aid, and there'll be some surcharges for all the add-on features that can be selected. Um, for example, an auto tailor coil feature, uh, binaural hearing, maybe there's a surcharge for special color. In this case, the transparent color has a surcharge of, of 35 euros. Um, if you sell your products to both end users and, and partners, there might also be different prices for those two categories. And typically you have different prices also for different markets and different sales channels. Um, you might also have some product combinations or configurations that you only want to offer through partners. So the configuration of the product may also depend on who you actually sell the product to. Once you have set up uh, all this master data in SAP, you can check that it works. There is uh, some debugging tools in SAP that allows you to check that the rules and the pricing logic that you have set up actually works like you expect it to work. So here you can see how you would configure the hearing aid, uh, choosing different styles and, and battery sizes, etc. The challenge is now, how do you make all this valuable data available outside SAP? In your sales configurator, in your CRM tool, on your website, um, on a mobile device. The problem is that it would be too big of a task and too error prone if you wanted to replicate the data in these systems. Um, furthermore, if you have multiple versions of the same data, it's of course not very good because that requires dual maintenance. Um, another challenge, which is probably more serious when you start to think about it, is that even if you were available, even if you were able to somehow dump uh, all the SAP data, how should you interpret it in your application to get the same behavior as an SAP? For example, how should you interpret all the procedures and constraints we just looked at to get the right behavior in the configurator uh, that you want to have in your external system? How should you calculate the correct price, taking all the, the details about sales areas and pricing logic and so forth into account? One way to um, address this problem is to use uh, configured ACE between your SAP system and your end applications. So um, in this solution, you first import all the necessary data from SAP using the ACE SAP extractor. You then um, compile uh, the extracted data into a self-contained package called a VT package, where you basically uh, get all the configuration and pricing data from SAP stored in a form that can be understood by ACE. And then finally, you use the ACE configure and pricing APIs to access that SAP data in the VT package uh, and, and thereby make it available in a web application or uh, integrated with an external system. So let's take a closer look at how each of these different elements work uh, on the following slides here. So first you specify what product data you are interested in, in working with. Um, this typically includes uh, normal, non-configurable products uh, and configurable products. And the extractor will automatically include all the necessary configuration profiles uh, constraints and procedures, variant tables, etc. cetera. Um, if you want to work with pricing, you can also extract pricing information, uh, such as the price procedures and all the different condition types you have set up. And the extractor will then also include all the necessary data relevant to that, the condition tables, access sequences, uh, et cetera. And after you have specified what you want to extract, you basically run the extractor to read uh, the data from SAP. The extractor will then create a VT package that contains all the data from SAP and store it on the ACE platform in the package repository. An ACE platform contains a secure and versioned uh, cloud-based data repository where you can store all your configuration data. So here we see the, the demo package that I worked with in this example here. And let's try to take a look at what is uh, inside such a VT package. Um, as you can see, it contains uh, products there at the top, uh, corresponding to the materials that we extracted, all the 
configuration models corresponding to the KMATs, and finally, all the prices uh, stored in a pricing database with all the relevant pricing information. The, uh, the ACE product also contains a debugger that you can use to, to validate that the data you just extracted actually works as you expected. So you can build up a little configuration here, and you can, as you can see here on this next screenshot here, you can configure the product uh, in a debugger and make sure that it actually works. There's the pricing screen where you can see how the price for the configured product will play out, uh, and you can validate that it meets your expectations. Once the data is in ACE, you can access it uh, through the ACE Configure API. Um, and this is a web API which is built for, for cloud-based architectures, and it provides uh, high scalability and good performance. And you can use the API to uh, build a solution with your SAP data. Um, here's an example uh, of how you use the API. I don't expect you to read all the details, but just to give you an idea of what is going on. Uh, you first provide the name of the package that you want to work with. Then you specify what product you're interested in configuring. You specify what assignments that the user has uh, already done. And then you get a response back uh, that you can use to uh, create your configurator experience. And basically that contains all information you need in order to, yeah, to create the configurator. So that makes it uh, easy to build an interactive configurator uh, on top of the API. Here we see a little example of how that might work. Um, we've created a, a web application on top of the API. It uses the hearing aid model we just saw before. Um, it took a couple of weeks, I think, to implement this UI. Uh, and as you can see, it's uh, quite easy and simple to use uh, to configure a product. And if you want to play with it, you can actually try it out by visiting our website on configure.com where, where you can try it out. So up until now, we have only looked at a pure SAP scenario where we only work with SAP data. Uh, we compile it to the platform and we exposed it in the uh, ACE Configure API. But the ACE platform also supports that uh, you can work with configuration data from other providers, including Configure's own modeling application, uh, Configure model, uh, sorry, ACE model. And this means that the ACE platform can contain both SAP data, but also data from, from ACE model. And since it's quite easy to uh, combine data from multiple VT packages in a unified solution, it's straightforward to, for example, use configuration data coming out of uh, ACE model with pricing data coming from SAP. So why would you want to do this? Why would you want to take uh, a different modeling environment for modeling your products instead of LOVC? The main reason for that is that, that SAP's uh, variant configurator has a you could say sequential, somewhat old fashioned semantics that only gives you quite limited uh, usability and, and guidance in the configurator. Uh, let me show you a little example of, of what I mean. So suppose you want to model the following rule uh, in your SAP system. Uh, if the color is red, then the size must be small, medium or large. And this would work something like this in SAP, uh, you would create a, a constraint uh, and model it like, like I've shown here. But note at the end there that you can only mark some of the characteristics as be, being inferred. Uh, you cannot mark all of them. Uh, and that's a problem. Um, and we can see here on the next slide what the problem really is. Because if you run this data in a configurator, uh, it works pretty well if you select the color first. When you select the color first, you get some good guidance. So let's try that out. We select the color red and uh, the configurator will be able to tell you that you need to select one of those three different sizes. Um, but if you select the size first, then you don't really get any good guidance uh, on what colors you can select. Um, and this makes it quite difficult to work with. It's too easy to make mistakes. For example, you can start by selecting uh, a large size and then when you look at the colors, it looks like you can select all of them. But if you select, in this case, the red color, you get an invalid configuration. 
the challenge is really that this is how it works in SAP. Uh, and since ACE also is true to the behavior in SAP, it also works like that for, for our SAP models when running them in ACE. And of course, this type of experience is not very, very good for our users. They expect fast and accurate feedback. They expect that they get configurations that are valid uh, and they have some level of flexibility when they configure a product. Uh, for example, that they can select the options in, in, any, in any sequence. So an alternative to modeling in SAP is to use ACE for doing the modeling. Uh, I have a few slides here to quickly show you, give you an idea about how it works. Uh, you can see here that you define all the, the characteristics called features and families in ACE, uh, similarly to what we had in SAP. Uh, you can define rules, as you can see on this screen here. Here's a list of the rules for the hearing aid. Um, there is a number of, of quite interesting features uh, that we could talk about maybe in another Tech Talk uh, versioning and collaboration that will uh, that shows uh, that it's quite nice when you start modeling uh, complex products. Um, and of course, you can create rules like here's a text rule that shows how you can combine different hardware components uh, together. And you can define table rules like we saw before in the uh, in the SAP example as well. And all of that goes into the model that you can then uh, publish to the platform. Uh, and the, the combined hybrid solution looks something like this. Uh, you can get prices from SAP uh, and you can get the, uh, the configuration models from, from ACE. And SAP pricing is extremely flexible and powerful. It has a lot of, uh, of value. A lot of the business processes in SAP rely on pricing data. So we want to keep pricing in SAP. But as we saw, the variant configurator is, is uh, in some cases, has in some cases quite limited functionality and usability. Uh, and in these cases, ACE model provides a, a better alternative. Um, and then the combined data uh, is exposed in the API and you can use them uh, just like I showed before in, in an application. Um, an example of how to use this type of solution can be experienced uh, in the customer case by uh, CNH Industrial. And together with one of our implementation partners, they have developed uh, an online web-based application uh, and actually also an offline iPad uh, solution where their dealers and customers can can order their products, which in this case are agricultural uh, machines. And as you can see, they offer different brands there to the left, uh, and they have a nice UI for, for working with, with configuration and pricing. Um, and that comes from SAP. It's being compiled to the ACE platform and being exposed in the APIs. So with this example, I'll conclude this presentation. Uh, we've seen how you can make your SAP configuration and pricing data accessible in a web-based solution uh, that allows you to uh, ex expose it to both internal and external stakeholders. You can reuse your data without having to do um, dual maintenance and you can combine it with uh, data from other sources uh, for a better user experience. So that concludes my presentation. Thanks for watching. If you move the product logic out of SAP, how do you mm -hmm. support configuration of a product from within SAP? Right. So that, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, and we have some experience with how to, uh, to address that. I mean, basically uh, what we do in that scenario is that we, um, we've implemented a SOAP web service uh, that can send and receive configurations to and from SAP. Uh, this web service is then used by a standalone configurator uh, that can then fetch and load the configurations. Um, SAP will then basically send the configuration, the starting configuration to the web, uh, to that SOAP web service. Uh, it will get an ID back uh, and then uh, it can call an external configurator with that ID to configure the product. And then that external configurator will, once the configuration is complete, can then uh, send the, res the result back to the to the SOAP service and SAP can read it from there. So the experience for the user will basically be that, that from within SAP, uh, you will mark certain products as being externally configured. And when you then start the variant configurator, it will actually 
open up an, an, uh, a screen in SAP, a window in SAP that, uh, that docks or embeds that external configurator. So that's the type of solution we would, we would recommend. In what way is that process automated? Can the endpoint be fed automatically by SAP VC data? Yeah, that is uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> they can be automated that process. Yeah, yeah. Both the extraction can of course be automated, uh, and also the the configuration of products from within SAP could use uh, the type of solution I just sketched before. Is it a local server or AWS? So uh, we currently support uh, ACE as an on-prem solution. It, it can be deployed uh, on Azure uh, if you want. You can also get it as a subscription model from Configit. Uh, and on our roadmap is to provide it as a, um, as a uh, hosted solution, hosted by Configit. Uh, it should also run on uh, Amazon Web Service. Uh, it's not something we, we work a lot with in Configit, but I know we have customers that are that are uh, checking that out for the moment. What is the status of price modeling and engine with Configit Ace? Yeah, that is really a, a roadmap question. Uh, and the short answer is that currently we we support uh, logical modeling inside of SAP, but we inside of Ace, but we have a number of new features there that could assist in, in supporting uh, price authoring or price logic, I should rather say authoring. And that is our, one of our new uh, features called uh, calculations. So that might uh, tie some of the, yeah, the strings together in, 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 a, in a solution where you also want to maintain prices inside of, of ACE. Uh, but currently the solution would be that, that the, the actual pricing data comes from an external source such as SAP. What about bonds or bill of materials? Do you also support that? Yeah, they're, they're also supported. So they're also part of the extraction. Uh, when you extract a, a material that has an associated bill of material, the extractor will automatically include that uh, bill of material uh, and all the, the bomb items on it, um, all the selection conditions. And that super bomb is then extracted. Uh, and when you then configure the product through the API, the um, the, uh, the ACE Configure API or the engine will basically explode that bill of material into a 100% bill of material, which is then returned as, as sublines in the response. So yeah, that is, that is supported. Versions of SAP that we support? Yeah, what the versions, yeah, we support um, SAP uh, ECC, the, the good old, uh, version of SAP ECC 6 and also S for HANA is supported. We also support some older versions, uh, SAP ECC 4.6, I think it's called there. They're not used uh, by many, many uh, customers any longer. So, but it's the ECC uh, and S for HANA we, we support. And we use basically the, um, the RFC uh, APIs provided by uh, SAP uh, remote function calls to, uh, to access the data uh, and to extract it.